Okay, y'all. So today is just a day I'm going to be transparent because I'm just tired of holding everything in, y'all. So this is my way of getting it off my chest. So anyways, back in May of 2021, I found out that My husband was cheating. During that time, during that time in May or whatever, we had already been struggling before then. We only on the third year of marriage and we already throwing around, I don't want to be with you, we finna get a divorce. We already threatening each other on that stuff in regular basic arguments. Uh, so when he cheated, I just took it as an exit. You know, I just took it as my, my, my chance to get to going because all the other stuff didn't keep me from being with him and trying to make this work. But that one had to. That one broke the camel on the camel's back. That's so. And and if that's something that he knew when he decided to do that, that let me know that he didn't want to be with me no more as well. So I gracefully, you know what I'm saying, follow that path. So I took my kids. We went and we stayed in the kind of lodge for 13 days. Uh. Uh, I went and worked. I start, I used to do hair out of my house in my own little area, like kind of like this one. But I'm in this salon. I'm in a suite right now. But anyway, so while I do that, um, I'm working. I start a new job, you know, working in a salon and whatever. So I'm I'm doing hair and I'm working in a salon as a salon assistant, getting paid hourly or whatever and tips. So cool. So as I do that. You know, I worked my way up to us to getting us our first, you know, our own place, me and my children. So we, you know, when we move in, you know, their father couldn't come. So I feel like that was a shock for him because, you know, I like I said, I'm my demeanor is my demeanor. You know, I do have a little tomboyish ways and all of that, but I'm the. The greatest part about me being your woman is I'm submissive. I'm very submissive, okay? I'm very observant, and I'm very, like, dedicated to making my partner feel good. So, it's like, once I cut that off, it make it make, it can make you feel some kind of way. You feel me? Because it's like I cut it off. Like, I don't wean you off. I don't, I just cut you off immediately. I can make you feel high and it make you feel real low. And that's a blessing and a curse. You know what I'm saying? So in doing that, me moving like that, you know, it, it kind of maybe like tricked his mind or made him feel some kind of way, which as I walk through this process with you guys, I can understand. So being that he no longer, I no longer felt like, he had to have certain controls like over me anymore. And I started to be on my own. Finally, this is my first time being on my own, you guys. Uh, and once I started being on my own, I started to like the freedom of being on my own. I realized, oh, I don't have to do this. Oh, I don't have to do that. Oh, I don't have to say this. Oh, I don't have to be like this. Oh, I don't have to wear this. Oh, I don't have to have this kind of hair. Oh, I don't have to, you know what I'm saying? I can do whatever I want to do. I can feel however I want to feel. I can be whatever I want to be. I can do whatever I want to do. I can learn now, finally, to get to learn myself and who I am, which is something I lost in that marriage. Just like I'm pretty sure it's something, it, he lost himself as well. Um, so, okay, as we move on or whatever, and our, you know, he, you know, he wasn't able to get a place as soon as I was, uh, because, you know, my dad helped me, you know what I'm saying? My stepdad helped me a lot. So cool, you know? So, so, um, 
I, at first I would let him come over, you know, cause I was sympathetic. I, my first son, I, his father wasn't around. So to be in a relationship with somebody for six years and raise two kids together, being three homes and to go to not having that support, whatever it is, because, you know, sometimes being a wife is not all what it's cracked up to be like. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Just in my opinion, in my experience. Uh, and I would say that if your man does not know, like, okay, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to how I how I learned that. But to me at that time, it wasn't what it was cracked up to be, being a wife. And it was, didn't seem like what being a husband was what it was cracked up to be to him either. So, cool. As we slowly got to learn that, we realized, hey, I, I may not like you. And, hey, you may not like me. So, we started to realize that our relationship was circumstantial. You know what I'm saying? I got with him right when I got out of prison. He was in his mama basement. You feel me? So, we both was started from the bottom and worked our way up to, the, to, to what we did have. And so, anyways, I respected that relationship and that dynamic. So, I wanted to continue at least at friendship. And so I, I would let him come over and watch the kids because he didn't have nowhere to bring take them to at the time. Then I would, you know what I'm saying, sometimes I would work late at night, you know what I'm saying, because now I'm a single mother with kids and uh, I got to I gotta work. So it would be beneficial for him to be able to pick the kids up from school and then go play with them or whatever. And then when it's time to go to bed, he put them to bed for me and I could just come on in the house and then he could leave. I thought that was a wise decision because he was telling me about that with his other baby, with his prior baby mama before me. So I'm like, okay, we can do this. But it seemed to complicate things even more. It seemed to, you know, make him feel like, oh, she doing this, so I know she going to do this. Oh, she doing that, so I know she with this. But I really was not with none of it at, at all. I really want to just go into my shell because me, honestly, the last baby daddy I had, which is my first son's daddy, when we broke up, baby, he was gone. So that's what I was expecting. So when you was around, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I wanted to change that dynamic. I didn't want to do that again, be raising a kid by myself and then the daddy go on and he he want to be stepdaddy somewhere else. I just didn't want that. So cool. I soon had to stop it because... Lines start getting crossed, boundaries start getting crossed. So this one I learned to learn boundaries, and this one I learned that he tr that he was a trigger for me, like, and that he had been a trigger for me the whole relationship. And I can sit here right now and tell you all the stuff he all the stuff he triggered in me that I thought that I had that I done took counseling, anger management, all kinds of stuff to heal and recess and get over. The lack thereof would, would trigger me to feel those same ways again, like those same situations, then bring those same situations. It was just a toxic circle that of, like, I just got tired of it, y'all. So when he cheated, probably going all over. So when he cheated, like I said, it was just my, it was my chance to escape. So anyway, so one day, I'm going to just say this one day he came over he wanted to go through my tap my phone and my ipad or whatever i had changed the password because i found out that he was going through my stuff and tapping me and finding out where i was at through my app from through my computer so my computer and all my stuff was set up was connected to my ipad and my phone so i i took it off so once he realized that i took it off and he couldn't see what i was doing see who i was messaging and all of that he came over and I told him, hey, you starting to scare me. So if you come back over here, I'm going to call the police. So then he said, I ain't give a fuck, right? Cool. Okay. I care about the police. You don't. That's on you. But I do. Okay. So then he was like, uh, because y'all got to understand, I went to prison at 19 for putting my hands on some, on my ex, which is now my man now, 10 years later. Ooh, that's another story for another day. Uh, I went to prison. I ain't going to say, I went to prison for four years, right? So I've been with you six years. You do the same exact thing. 
to me that caused me to go to prison back then. I have the strength to just leave peacefully and kindly and not mess up nothing I got going on. I let it light me under, uh, light up, put a light under me that will never fade in Jesus' name. And you still can't let me be. Anyways. So he broke my stuff. Broke my tablet first, my iPad. He got it out of my car. He broke my iPad. Then he proceeded to come in the house and ask where my phone was at. Meanwhile, yeah, I'm doing hair. So, and my children are there. And so he's like, I'm like, just, I'm like, everything's going to be okay. You know, I got my client, so I'm doing her hair. I'm like, everything's going to be okay. You'll get it later. Just, you know, she don't know what's going on right now, I hope. So I'm just trying to, you feel me? I'm just trying to tell her. Just chill, you know, I'm just trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to defuse the situation because like I said, it's been pandemonium, boy. Like, this is a nice story. That's how I feel. So, he uh said, you think this a game? And then, because he couldn't go in my, uh, he had my tablet. I, I, at this point, he didn't break it yet, my bad. He had my iPad. And he was like, oh, you, he wanted to, like, let me see it. I was like, no, what's the thing? What's the password? He was like, I was like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll get to you later. You know, I'm saying that to him. So he was like, oh, you think this is a game? So right in front of her, he slammed the thing, tap, slammed my tablet on the ground. Break it. So then he go outside or he trying to find my phone because I hit my phone because I, I already, I already, shit, he broke my tablet. He going to break my phone. So then... I go in the bathroom, I start calling 911. Like, I know this man don't, I know this man hear me calling 911, he gonna get the fuck on. Oh no, 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 baby. This man said, what, oh, 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 for real or some shit? I don't even know at that time. And took my phone while I'm on the phone with the police and slammed that down. So not only did he break my iPad, take my MacBook, and he broke my iPhone 11 that I just got. In one day. Then, like I said, I do hell, so I still had to continue to do my client's hair. After the police came, after the kids, after the kids asking me over and over again why daddy broke mommy stuff. And then check this out, y'all. I couldn't get a temporary restraining order. I couldn't get a no trespassing or none of that because he ain't had no address. I couldn't even get a divorce for a minute because he ain't had no address. So the only address I had for him was his work address. So because all I had for him was his work address, they couldn't serve him. Then for 14 months, he didn't sign the papers. And what made me the maddest about him not signing the papers, y'all, is because he made me just like him. That's how I feel. He made me a infidel, a, a, a adulterer. You feel me? He made me a person that commit infidelities and stuff because here we are almost on two years. This is It's going to be 2023. And... I'm still not divorced, but I got a boyfriend. I done dated and all of this stuff in this past, like I said, almost two years. And the hardest thing about connecting with somebody is that I felt like I still belong to him. But then a wise lady told me that that's in my mind. You feel me? And it was. You know what I'm saying? To the point where even when I'm in a good relationship where I'm actually happy, like... I'm actually, I actually had my best friend back. All the stuff that I thought I was crazy for, wanting and all of that stuff. Just the basic stuff. Just somebody to vibe with. You feel me? I got that back now. You know what I'm saying? And every day not easy. Don't get me wrong. Some days it's hard. Some days it's me that's making it hard. You feel me? But together we decide to go through it. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only thing I could be thankful for because... A trauma bond, a trauma bond will really, really, really break you if you let it. And 
I want to tell y'all about trauma that don't hit on you, don't cheat on you. It's other kind of trauma out there, y'all. Like, it's trauma of somebody laying you down over and over and over again. It's, it's trauma of somebody knowing that they will never be the man you want them to be. It's trauma of you watching the man that you have potential in and he, you have, you see the potential in and he never, he never, uh, he never even resembles that potential. So then he showed you that potential is invisible. It's about not being there when you need him the most. You know, like not not protecting you, not providing you security. Like, I mean, y'all, I can go on and on, but With all that being said, I choose to be happy. I've learned to set boundaries for myself. I learned that I, I used to be the in that relationship. I was scared to for I was scared to ask for what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? And the only time I would ask for it is when I was upset. So now I, I automatically go for what I want. I don't even hide what I want. I'm not ashamed of what I want. I want a lot because I am a lot. I provide a lot. I will give a lot. You feel me? Yeah. But like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification so I can come back to y'all with some more real, raw and uncut. You feel me? Uh, stories, because I actually have a lot of them. I buried a lot of humbling experiences in my 31 years of living. And I'm, I'm, I want to share it with the world because I just feel like it's somebody out there that can relate to me. It's, it's the little girl out there who done been through a lot it's a little girl that done been through promiscuity it's a girl that done been through you know being ashamed of who she is it's a girl that done been ashamed of if you a lie if you loud that's just your personality baby you feel me if you a little ghetto that's just your personality you feel me it's a lot of girls who be ashamed of that who they own mamas beat them down for that you feel me so we we gonna learn how to strive over them things and turn them turn them them things people call weaknesses into our strengths, baby, into our money, baby, into our bag, baby. You feel me? So, yeah. Any weapon that was formed against me, baby, did not prosper. And the only way it's going to prosper is for the better of me. And that's what I declare and decree right here in this in this, in this this segment. Now, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and show your girl some love. I need to get to a 1,000 subscribers. Stop playing with me, okay? Let's turn YouTube up.